Oof, we got a lot to get through in this one. Buckle in, my friends. When we last left off, Sean Connery had returned to the 007 role one final time with Electronic Arts' swan song of the James Bond video game franchise. I forgot to mention this last time, but the reception too from Russia with Love wasn't really all too great. I feel like they expected more with Connery back, but ultimately it fell into pretty universal D plus or C minus grades, and it did not make the charts of the best selling GameCube, PS2, Xbox, or PSP games. So even though I had fun with it, I think From Russia with Love was a disappointment overall, which is too bad. But with the announcement of Daniel Craig taking over the role for the films in 2005, things were going to be changing quick. By mid-2006, Electronic Arts lost their license to produce James Bond games to Activision. Apparently, EA had plans to release a Casino Royale game to coincide with the film later that year, but obviously that had to be scrapped. But Activision was the company that won, a very successful publisher stemming all the way back to 1979. They have produced quite a few very successful franchises over the years, a few notable ones being Quake, Call of Duty, Guitar Hero, Crash Bandicoot, and Spyro the Dragon, just to name a few. They were awarded the rights to the Bond franchise for 2006 and ending in 2014, although as history shows us, it actually ended in 2012. They ended up releasing four Bond games in that six year run, but their first would not be released until late 2008. By then, Casino Royale had come and gone and Craig's second outing, Quantum of Solace, was set to be released at that same time in late 2008. But I feel like I should briefly touch on Casino Royale, as it actually is quite important to the release of this next game, which we will soon see. It was Ian Fleming's very first Bond novel, written all the way back in 1953. The film was released on November 14th, 16th, and 17th of 2006, and stars Daniel Craig as 007, Ava Green as Vesper Lind, Mads Mikkelsen as Le Chief, Jeffrey Wright as Felix Leiter, and has the only returning cast member from the Brosnan era, Judi Dench as M. There is no money penny in this film, no Q, and is essentially both a reboot to the series and sort of an origin story to Bond. We don't see Bond in his youth or anything like that, but it's a brief rundown of him getting his 00 status after killing two people for work. It follows Fleming's novel pretty closely with quite a bit added in. Bond must defeat and bankrupt Le Chief, a terrorist financer in a high stakes poker game at Casino Royale in Montenegro. It was directed by Martin Campbell who also directed Goldeneye. Casino Royale ended up being a massive hit and is the fifth most successful Bond film adjusted for inflation. The critical response was quite high and Daniel Craig received a lot of praise in his darker, more serious portrayal. I stated this before, but Casino Royale stands as my favorite Bond film to date and is the first one I ever went to see in theaters. In regards to video games at this time, 2006 and the tail end of 2005 also marked the introduction to the seventh generation of video gaming. The three console titans from Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft all released successors to their 6th gen consoles. November of 2005 saw the Xbox 360 taking place of the Xbox, and November of 2006 saw the PlayStation 3 taking over for the PlayStation 2, and the Nintendo Wii taking over for the GameCube. Comparing the three is very interesting though. In the 6th gen, Sony was the clear winner by far. If you doubled the sales of the Xbox and GameCube combined, it still didn't come close to the PlayStation 2. But this time, it's way different and way closer. Nintendo ended up being the winner here, with the Wii selling almost 5 times as much as the GameCube did, with their integrated motion controls and the wide appeal to families of all ages. Sony's PlayStation 3 actually did come in second and outsell the Xbox 360, but just barely. It was a bit of a downgrade from the PlayStation 2, selling about 68 million units less. But the Xbox 360, like the Wii, was a massive improvement over the Xbox, selling about four times as many units. So why am I covering all this? Well, it's my retrospective, I can cover what I want. But also, this next game was released for all three new systems, plus three others. But 2007 came and went, with both the next Bond film and Bond game being in development or pre-development. By early 2008, it was revealed that the next Bond film will be Quantum of Solace and will be a direct sequel to Casino Royale, picking up just minutes after that film ended. This had sort of been done before, at least with elements of a sequel, but never a direct continuation. For Russia with Love had Bond being with Sylvia Trench from Dr. No, Diamonds Are Forever had Bond tracking down Blofeld after his wife was murdered at the end of Honor Majesty's Secret Service, even though that was Lazenby and not Connery. And For Your Eyes only had Moore's Bond mourning the death of Lazenby's wife and getting revenge by supposedly killing Blofeld, also a different actor in the pre-title sequence. 
Count those if you wish, but this was going to be a definite sequel, same actors and all. Quantum of Solace was actually a Fleming story and was one of his short stories in the For Your Eyes Only anthology. It has absolutely nothing to do with the film except it has Bond in it. But Quantum of Solace was released on October 29th, 2008 in London and November 14th in the United States and stars Daniel Craig as 007, Olga Kurlenko as Camille Montez, Matthew Almerich as Dominic Green, and once again Judy Dench as M. Still no money penny or Q. Wanting revenge for Vesper in the last film, Bond sets out to stop the secret criminal organization that he later learns is Quantum, all while handling Dominic Green's ecological terrorism on Bolivia's water supply. It was directed by Mark Forster in his only entry in the Bond series. While still in the upper half of the series in regards to sales, it stands as the 11th most successful Bond film adjusted for inflation, a bit of a step down from Casino Royale. Of Craig's four entries, it is his least successful. At the time of writing this, No Time to Die still has yet to be released, so I can't speak for that one. Response by the fans and critics were a bit lackluster to say the least. A lot of Bond fans tend to hate this movie, and while I don't necessarily agree, I do agree that it's nowhere near as good as Casino Royale. If I were to make a personal ranking list, which I may do down the road, it would probably be pretty low. But I do get some enjoyment out of it. Which finally brings us to the game proper. Activision's first entry into the series, and it's a game for a movie that not many even liked. Not a good sign, but let's get into this a little bit. Activision really wanted to get back to the idea of covering as many bases as they could here and release the game on a whopping six different platforms with three different developers. First, there was Treyarch, a developer that mostly focused on the Call of Duty series, making their version for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Nintendo Wii, and Windows, with the latter two also being ported by Beanox. A developer by the name of Vicarious Visions, largely known for the Tony Hawk and Guitar Hero series, made their own version for the Nintendo DS, making a return to the series from GoldenEye Rogue Agent. And lastly, our old friend the PlayStation 2 even got its own release from another one of our old friends, Eurocom, returning from James Bond Jr., The World's Not Enough, and Nightfire. The game was released on October 31st, 2008 in Europe, November 4th in North America, and two weeks later in Australia. By 2008, I had recently gotten my college degree and was well immersed in the Bond lore and collecting. I went to see Quantum of Solace in theaters a couple times, yet I had little to no excitement for the release of this game. I did not have a lot of money with the college thing and all, so I didn't end up getting one of the new systems until probably around the release of this game. I bought my Nintendo Wii from Electronics Boutique at a discounted rate since it was the one that they used in the store for anybody to play. I didn't care though. It wasn't until the project I did in 2010 of playing every Bond game in order that I finally got to this one. It was still the newest Bond game out, and after obtaining my copy for the Wii, I started it up, I played for about 10 minutes, and gave up. It's hard to remember now, but I think I couldn't get into the motion controls after being so familiar with the GameCube controller. To this day, I haven't tried to play it again. Until this project. So I am going into Quantum of Solace being 99% unfamiliar with it. Let's check out the back of the Wii box, since it's the one I own. Bond is back. Yes he is. Blending first person shooting and third person action, Quantum of Solace puts you in control of Bond's greatest weapon his mind. Blending first and third person. I'm curious to see how that works. Alright, let's do this and check out the PS3 version. Note, this is not my gameplay. My, uh, my, my laptop can't handle a big fancy game from 2008. There are some at MI6 who think I can't trust you. That you're blinded by inconsolable rage and motivated by revenge. But your motivation isn't my only concern. What concerns me are your methods. Excellent. We get a usual trailer for the game mixed with a continuous cut to Bond in his infamous gun-raised pose that's synonymous with Quantum of Solace. 
I mean, it's on all the posters and box art, but it gets you hyped for the game. Then, and it should be noted that there will be spoilers from Casino Royale the movie here since Quantum is a direct sequel and all. It begins with the very last scene from Casino Royale with Bond shooting Mr. White and approaching him. In the film, it's an awesome moment and a perfect ending to the film. When Quantum of Solace begins, it's minutes later during a car chase. This game, though, tries to fill in the blanks right between the films, and the first level takes place right in that time frame. What did exactly happen between Bond saying his famous line and the car chase? Well, apparently it's this. Then we find out how the gameplay works with this hybrid of first and third person. It's first person until you go into cover mode, which switches to third. This kind of makes sense, as the cover mode worked pretty well in Everything or Nothing and From Russia with Love. So, yeah, I'd say the hybrid method does work. Graphically, it's a step in the right direction for sure. A definite improvement over the 6th gen graphics, but if you're used to how games look nowadays... Yeah, this may not draw you in in 2021. But that's an unfair assessment, and this retrospective is supposed to make you feel like you're in 2008. Daniel Craig though, something seems a bit off with him and I can't place what it is. It's not awful though, and you can clearly tell it's supposed to be him. You continue on through Mr. White's estate, which makes for a pretty cool game location actually. You do the usual Bond game thing of shooting through waves of enemies, and at this point, yeah, you know the drill. The feel of it seems to match the more serious Craig era tone, and you aren't engaging in mid-air jetpack battles like in From Russia With Love. One little addition that you'll come across are cell phones laying around. These help provide text or audio data to add some story immersion and act as collectibles to find. You'll eventually hack into Mr. White's computer system, resulting in... Uh-oh. Because he's holding a thermal detonator! <laughs> Escape the burning down villa, shoot down Mr. White's helicopter, which lets him crawl out of it okay, and in a nice parallel to the first scene in Casino Royale, he picks up the gun, aims it at Bond, which makes him quickly turn into the gun barrel sequence. And we get our title sequence, which to my surprise is not Another Way to Die from Jack White and Alicia Keys, but a completely different song performed by Curly, David Maurice, and Richard Fortas from Guns N' Roses and Thin Lizzy, weirdly enough. And this is played over a combination of visuals similar to the film's title sequence and a quick rundown of the first scene, The Car Chase. <laughs> The song is... decent. I actually quite like Another Way to Die, so this is sort of a disappointment, but it's whatever. It's an original song for the game. Visually though, I think it looks great, a pretty solid title sequence. You'll also notice the voice actors here like Daniel Craig and Olga Kurlenko, but then you also see Ava Green and Mads Mikkelsen, two actors whose characters died in Casino Royale. Hmm. Mission 2 continues to follow the film with M and Bond interrogating Mr. White after capturing him in Siena. M's bodyguard, Mitchell, then betrays MI6 and helps Mr. White escape, and you are to track this bro down through the streets and buildings of Siena. The gameplay is mostly the same here, the same waves of enemies while chasing Mitchell. Once you reach the bell tower, you get to melee against him with some pretty nifty quick time events. Press the buttons when they appear to land punches and kicks. If done properly, you will knock Mitchell down to his death, allowing you to grieve the loss of your boss's bodyguard. Which brings us to the end of the intro. Honestly, it's pretty faithful to the film here, and a pretty decent start once you get used to the controls and all. Which brings me to my next point. Here's the thing with this game. Although I go over just the first two levels for these, it's very important to point out that there are 15 levels in this game called Quantum of Solace, and 10 of them are playing through the story of Casino Royale. This isn't necessarily a complaint since I love Casino Royale, but talk about a misleading title for the game. If only one third of your entire game is the actual story with the title, something's off. I feel like calling this Casino Royale slash Quantum of Solace would probably not work for a game title, but it would make for a more accurate one to what you actually get. It's just so odd to me that this is how the game is. Quantum of Solace may have been the new movie by 2008, but in retrospect it did worse than Casino Royale did financially and critically, yet the game hides the fact that this is mostly a Casino Royale story. And well, the overall reception to this game universally got an F or D grade with a low C at best. 
We'll get to those other versions in a second though. This was just the PS3 one. Coming in with the absolute lowest grade of the 7th gen systems is easily the Wii one, which is the version that I own and played for only a few minutes. The thing with the Wii is that they tried to find as many ways as they could to implement motion controls, and if you see on the back of the box, the only controller options for this one are the Wiimote with the nunchuck, or the Wii Zapper, which is basically the Wiimote nunchuck pressed into a plastic gun. No using the classic controller or GameCube controller with this one like a lot of Wii games offer. This control style really doesn't work for some players, so I think this version, while also looking the worst of the newer consoles, appeals to a much smaller audience as opposed to the superior PS3 or Xbox 360 controllers. Maybe that's my personal opinion, but the overall reception seems to agree with me. Apparently this version has some pretty noticeable lag too, which really hurts the focus on accuracy. That's a huge negative too. The Wiimote can also get tiring to use as you constantly have to have your arm raised and pointed at the screen in order to play. Sometimes you just want to unwind with a video game and making your arms tired may not be what a lot of players want. As far as the Xbox 360 and Windows versions go, they're very similar to the PS3. The graphics are pretty similar among the three with the Wii falling behind there. Windows, PS3, and Xbox 360 offer online multiplayer for up to 12, or at least offered and the Wii had up to 4, but allowed for actual in-person multiplayer, which is what propelled Bond video games into the mainstream to begin with. But with all the other negatives with the Wii version, that doesn't really make up for this game being one you want to seek out friends to play with. But we still have two other versions to cover, even though these are on old school systems. The Nintendo DS and PlayStation 2 with some different developers. Let's check out the PlayStation 2 version first. As expected, it starts the same way with Bond shooting Mr. White in the leg and the obvious lower end graphics, so we essentially get the same story. When starting, the gameplay is different right away. This version doesn't go for the hybrid control style like in the newer gens, it's simply in the third person and controls like From Russia With Love did. There is an emphasis on GPS tracking with this one to I guess help with orienting your whereabouts more. This one also has much more of an emphasis on stealth, which depending on your style of gameplay could be a good or bad thing. Aside from the standout PS2 graphics and altered style of gameplay, there isn't too much to say about it. The game still follows the Quantum of Solace with Casino Royale structure, but with less levels actually. Also, there is no multiplayer to be had here. But here's the thing with this one. This one is typically considered to be the best version. Not by much, but I think with it sticking to the third person style, more players latched onto that as opposed to the hybrid one. I can't really speak from experience, at least not yet, but I would like to play through this version someday. I guess sometimes the old ways are the best. And yet we aren't quite done yet. Yes, there is the DS version left to bring up from Vicarious Visions. This one is quite a bit different, even for a DS game in that you play it in book form with the DS on its side and has a huge emphasis on touch controls with the stylus. This one, instead of us seeing Bond shoot Mr. White in the leg from the get-go, we get some classic MI6 training to get used to its controls. Half the screen is a GPS map, and the other half is the actual game with Bond uh, awkwardly running around in all directions. This one tends to have an emphasis on hand-to-hand -hand combat, which can result in some pretty fierce action. Oh, and there's no Camille in this game. Sorry, Olga. I guess. Critically, this one seems to get a solid D grade. Like with many of these handheld versions, it's unique for what it is, but not typically the ideal version for getting your Quantum of Solace fix, if that's even a thing nowadays. But hey, it's still apparently better than the Wii one. I guess sometimes the old ways aren't always the best. For such an old game now, there isn't too much to say about the multiplayer. The servers for the online ones were shut down long ago, and only the Wii one offers local multiplayer, as I mentioned before. You know, the worst version. They did try some new ideas here, like one person is Bond and the others are the organization trying to stop him, kind of like Jason on the newer Friday the 13th game. Now there's a comparison. So there is a pretty basic rundown of Activision's first foray into Bond video gamedom. Was it a success? I mean, I would say it's a pretty simple no. I feel like nobody really cared about this game. I don't know anybody else personally who even played it, and it was never really on my radar either. I think the subpar reception to the movie made people less excited for this, and was ultimately not a very strong start for the Activision era. But at least it was cool to once again be back into a movie tie-in release, as we haven't had one in close to a decade here. And unfortunately, this would be the very last one as well. There will not be a game release for Skyfall, Spectre, or No Time to Die, and the days of us getting a Bond game with the new movie are long gone. Rest in peace to the real ones. 
Next time, we're going to be going back to basics. Back to what made Bond video games a success. That's right, it's time to go back in time to an old film release, now 15 years in the past. We'll see if Activision's sophomore effort can be more enjoyable than their first. And we're saying goodbye to the PlayStation 2 for good here. Also, no PC version, but they will be back. It's time to enter the remake territory. James Bond will return in GoldenEye 007, as well as GoldenEye 007 Reloaded.